let's start solving a stock buy and sell with one limit okay so this is also a variation of uh, the very famous problem of the stock buy and selling in this variation what we do is we have a limit that means we only have to buy and sell a stock once okay again one array would be present with us right in which stock prices would be mentioned let's read it thoroughly well the problem statement says you are given an array prices where prices i denotes the price of a stock on the ith day find the maximum profit that you can make by buying a single stock and then selling it in future if it is not possible to make profit then return zero all right so these are a few uh, conditions here what are the things mentioned you would be given an array right in this array the name is prices the name of this array is prices every ith price is going to denote the price of the stock on that ith day on that particular day now what you can do is you have to buy a stock on one day and on any other day which you feel that you are making a profit you have to sell it the conditions are the profit should be maximum and you have to make only one transaction of buy and sell just like the regular questions of stock buy and sell it should be kept in mind that we are going to travel only in one direction because we cannot go in the past and not buy the stock or sell the stock in the past if we have bought the stock somewhere here we can only sell the stock afterwards fine when these conditions are clear let's go on and see a few sample test cases now let's take a look here now these are two cases which are mentioned in this case you have the array having these numbers 7 1 5 3 6 and 4 and the output here is 5 now let's see how we are able to reach to reach till this 5 let's say we are saying that you can buy the stock on the day 1 at price 1 okay which means this now we can sell it on the fifth day with at price 6 this one hence in this transaction the profit that we book is 5 6 minus 1 we got 5 as a profit and in this case, in this particular example, 5 is the maximum profit that you can make. All right. Coming and seeing here, the second example, you can see a weird thing about this example, right? That all the elements are in descending order. That means the price of the stock has only gone down in this fashion. Okay. The graph did not go up ever. So in this case, there is no possible way that you can make a profit, that you can book a profit. You cannot. Hence, the answer that you have to return is zero. So let's discuss the brute force for this problem. Coming on to the brute force, uh, let's say what could be the simplest method we can apply to this uh, problem. Well, we have this sample test case, right? So we have to find out the possibility or you can say the possible profit that I get and I then need to maximize it. So what can we do is let's suppose we create one variable result which will be maximized and in which we'll be keeping the profits that we get okay so how how are we going to create the profits well for that we can try out every possible pair in which we can get a profit coming on to how are we going to make those uh, pairs well let's, let's suppose i have my i beginning from here then i can have my j beginning from this point till this okay from i plus one till the end and what is going to be the condition that your price i your price i should be lesser than your price j if so that is just, so that means you can make a profit here by buying at i and selling at j so first of all we are going to go uh, ahead and try to buy at 7 and see where we can sell it so that we can make a profit okay just, well for the first iteration we won't be able to because 7 is biggest out all of these right then we go ahead and move our i here so and let's try out from 5 till 4. So from 1, like from this point, once we buy at 1, the first pair we will get is 5 minus 1 because 5 is a possible one, 3 is a bigger value, 6 is a bigger value, 4 is also a bigger value. Out of all of these, we can only, like the maximum value I have is 6. That means the maximum profit I will make would be 6 minus 1, 5. Now 5 is going to be stored in result and the result is getting maximized every value that we are generating every profit that we are generating we are maximizing that in result once we have ended this loop completely my rest would be having the maximum value so far okay now the thing is this approach is possible this will lead you to the right answer but how much time is it taking well it is taking order of n squared how because every element that you are choosing for that you need to do o n amount of work and you are choosing o n 
order of n numbers okay so this will lead you to order of n square time complexity which is not suitable at all for this question and are we using any extra space there well we are not so let's just the space complexity is going to be order of one let's move ahead to the next approach so approach to this question is quite simple let's see we have to do two things we have to keep track of two variables let's say first one we keep is result which is going to be having my eventual profit and the other one minimum result would be initialized with zero and minimum the minimum value would be initialized with the first value that we have or the zeroth value that we have which is seven now my task is to keep the track of minimum wheresoever i get the most dip okay you can say the least value i will try to make this variable change and at every iteration i'll book my profit and i'll keep the track of the profit in this rest variable all right let's see how it's done it'll be way easier once i am here i will start my iteration from this point till the end of the array at every instance i have to do two things first of all i have to book the profit let's say i'm saying my bought price of uh, the when i'm buying the stock it is seven and when i'm selling it it's ten what is going to be the result well it is three it'll be 10 minus 7 resulting in 3 well dress initially is 0 and 3 is a bigger value than that and we have to maximize dress what we will do we will keep 3 then i would go ahead now i get 1 all right i get 1 do i make a profit this time well i don't and if you try to then you would end up in this situation you'd be having a negative profit right but you are maximizing this result so that will be taken care because negative six is not going to be over, uh, overwriting this three. So this will be cancelled by itself. Remember, now once I have got one, I've got a smaller value than seven. This, my minimum is going to be now replaced. All right. Now this time I move ahead. I go to three. What do I have to do? I have to book the profit. How would I book the profit? Three, the current value minus the minimum so far that I've got. It is one, right? Now the profit that I have is two. Is two bigger than three? No, that means this would also not be replaced. Going ahead in the same direction, now I have six. And this, once I make the profit, six minus one, I get five. Five is bigger than three. That means it is going to be overwriting three, right? Now I'm going ahead to nine. And once I go to nine, the profit will be nine minus one. That, me that means it will be eight. 8 is even bigger than 5. This we are going to cut down this value and 8 is our so far the maximum profit that we have made. Make sure that every value that you are making the profit for in each iteration you are also checking the minimum value. Because no minimum uh, like a smaller value than 1 has been encountered that is why minimum has, my minimum has been constant so far. Now I go to 2. Okay the last iteration I would say 2 minus 1. It will result in a profit of 1, but it is not going to replace my 8 because it's a smaller value. This, now this, at this point, my iteration ends. Once my iteration ends, the latest value that I have in risk is going to be the answer that I want. Okay, so the answer for this question is 8. 8 is going to be the maximum profit that you can book in this particular example. All right, let's try to see the code of it. Okay, so here's the code. What are we doing? First of all, we are making up two variables, minimum so far and a result. Result is initialized with zero, as I told you, and the price is zero. That means the first element of price is array. I'm keeping it here. Then we have to iterate in the array, and I'm beginning from one, and I'm going till the end. At every point, I am keeping the track of my minimum variable, and once I keep the track of it, I am maximizing the result. That means whatsoever the previous result was, comma, the current profit that I'm making, whatsoever is bigger, that will be stored in rest. All right, and you know this is how we are keeping track of minimum. Every new, you know, every new value that we get, we see whether it is a smaller than our value that I already have stored in the minimum or not. Once it is a value which is uh, which is a smaller than the minimum so far, it will be replaced easily. Once this loop is executed, I will return the value result, and successfully we will get our answer. Also, we have to discuss about its complexity now. Now you have only taken one iteration from the uh, beginning of the array till the end, right? You have not repeated any of these cell. You have not uh, tried to loop any of these cell more than once. That means the order of n is going to be its time complexity. Talking about its space complexity, you are not using any extra space. So for that, it is going to be order of one. That means constant space complexity. 
Let's try to run the code for it. Now, here's the same code. Let's compile and run it. Okay, we have got our answer. Let's try to submit this. All right, so it's successfully passing all the test cases now. So I hope this variation of the question is also understood by you now. And if you want to try it once more, please make sure you use uh, a diagram and you try it on the code yourself and you would understand it fully. And if you like the approach, if you like the video, then do tell me in the comments. Thanks.